So following on from video 53, in uh, video 53 I built a power supply. So I had a, a transformer uh, from some audio equipment and I built an AC to DC converter. So I put a, a bridge rectifier in and some regulation so that I could turn it into a split rail power supply. Now this just popped through the door today and um, this it has a similar idea. So this circuit board turns a single DC voltage into a split rail power supply. So this takes uh, 5 volts in and then the output is plus 12 volts and minus 12 volts. So I'm not quite sure. There wasn't much of a specification so I'm not sure how much current this is going to be able to supply in, along those split rails. Probably not that much. But I thought I would uh, connect it up to a power supply and well first of all see if it's working and then um, do some do some tests so I'll put some loading on it and um, see what kind of current it can supply but I'm thinking if this works well uh, I could use this for um, audio circuitry and it was it was not that cheap. I think it was about four pounds for this board. So um, I probably wouldn't put one of these in in everything, but um, but if it works, it's it's an option for providing a split rail power supply where you you don't really have that that uh, sort of ability coming out of the existing power supply. So firstly let's connect up 5 volts and make sure that the thing is working. So I've got 5, I've got my bench top power supply set to 5 volts. I've got 100 milliamps available. And we'll just dab the probes on here. So there we are, I've got 12, plus 12 volts on that side and minus 12, 12.9, uh, so that's minus 12.9, what's on that side, plus 12.4, yeah, so we've got a good split rail power supply there. Um, I'm just going to check if this ground if the two grounds are the same. So I'll use the ground as the reference. So that's the minus 12.4 sorry plus plus 12.4 and minus 12.9. Yeah so the, the two grounds are connected to each other which is really really useful because it means that I can have a single rail 5 volts going in and then we've got 12 volts relative to the same ground going out and minus 12 relative to the same ground also. So I'll um, put some pin headers on this and we can put it on the uh, on the breadboard and do some experimentation about what kind of load it can support. So I've got it all wired up on the breadboard now so I've got some pin headers on the uh, the circuit board here so I can split out the plus and minus 12 volts on my breadboard here. Uh, it's a bit of a wiry mess, sorry about that. Um, I've got my multimeter connected over here. I just wanted to show you I'm actually powering this off a, um, a lithium ion battery now. So I've got this lithium ion battery which will which is uh, 3.7 volts I think can't remember but um, it's either 3.7 or 4.2 um, which is quite cool because I've got this driving the circuit board so it doesn't need to just be 5 volts you can actually have a, a lithium ion battery so, so I've got a nice self-contained power supply now so with the 3.7 going in and then the plus 12 minus 12 going onto the onto the board 
so if I just put that out of the way for a minute, I'll bring the, uh, the multimeter in so you can see it. So I've got the multimeter across one of the resistors here at the moment. So I've got the I've got 3300 ohm resistor, so 3.3k resistor. And um, so if we do the sums for that, we've got 12 volts and 3.3k. So that's 3.6 3 milliamps. So we've got about 4 milliamps going through being drawn out of this circuit board at the moment, which is okay. I mean, there's a lot of things that we can drive off for four milliamps, and that's good. What I'm going to do, I've got a smaller resistor here, so this is the 270 ohm resistor. So I'm going to plug this in, and um, and we'll see if the voltage drops very much from the 12.1 there. So I'll plug this in on this side here. Okay, so it's gone down to 11.8. 11.8, and that resistor's getting quite hot now. Don't think I want to leave that in there for too long, but there you go. So we've got a so we've got 270 ohms. So uh, so I was putting that in parallel with the two 270. So if if we do that sum now, we've got. Uh, 3300 times 270 and then divided by the sum of the two 270 so 250 ohms so when I, when I put when I plug this in in parallel we've got approximately 250 ohms so then if we divide 12 by 250 and let's do 12 divided by 0.25k and that gives us 48 milliamps so uh, so that's quite good 50 50 milliamps so the um, so this board will drive uh, 50 milliamps on each of those sides well I'll, no, let me try the other side I should tr try make sure that the other side is actually symmetrical shouldn't I let me do that so we'll put that there and we'll put the resistor across is that in the right place oh yeah it's getting hot so minus 12 volts there 12.3 oh that's really hot let's take that out okay so we're getting 50 50 milliamps across each of these split rails and 50 milliamps is good you know that's going to be useful for a lot of audio circuits so um so i think this is a really nice little board i think the the next step is to actually connect it up perhaps to an audio circuit and see if there's much uh, audible noise because um it's not going to be very useful uh, for testing um, op amps for example if it injects a lot of noise um, so I think what I might do is connect up the scope next let's connect up the oscilloscope we'll have a look and see if there's much noise coming out of this thing so now I've got the split rail power supply connected up to a, a quad op amp here the LM324 so I've got this in a um, non-inverting configuration and um, so it's it's got a gain of two so I set it up with a gain of two and what I've got coming in on the input is a one kilohertz signal that's coming in from the oscilloscope um, so just testing to see if we get a nice pure tone so let's just check that the amp's on, yes. So if we can connect up the one kilohertz tone. Um, and 
I'll just connect the scope on the input for a moment. So sorry for the rather poor way of capturing the oscilloscope screen, but uh, so we've got five volts per division. So this is about five volts as the square wave coming in from the uh, oscilloscope at the moment. And if I just if I switch from the out input to the output, there we go. So five volts per division. So that's about two divisions. That's ten volts. So we're definitely getting a a gain of two from the op amp. Let me turn the gain down a bit. Uh, so that's that's a good result, I think. So the LM324 is being powered by our split rail board here, and um, the tone sounds quite pure. I can't can't see much in the way of high frequency interference coming uh, coming through with the signal onto the oscilloscope screen. So I think uh, this is quite a nice little a nice little board. And it's it's obviously a boost converter because we've got the th 3.7 volts coming in, and it boosts up to 12 volts and minus 12 volts as the uh, outputs. So, um, so it's it's chopping the signal there, but it's obviously doing that with a high enough frequency so that it's not causing uh, any noticeable interference to the uh, to the audio signal. So that's pretty good. Um, and this is, you know, I think this this board is pretty good value for money. OK, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and see you in the next video.